Welcome everyone to What the Force and welcome back to our Bad Batch Report. I'm Marie Claire Gould, your host, and with me is Kyle Gould. Hi. Hi. Why are you sad? I'm not sad. I'm tired. I was up until like two o'clock in the morning watching uh, Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Oh. <laughs> because I could, like, as soon as the first episode ended on this big cliffhanger, I'm like, well, I'll just watch the first five minutes of the ep- second episode and then that went long as well. And we're recording this a little bit later than we normally do, which is we try to record it on Friday or recording it on Saturday morning because I was basically passed out for 30 hours mm-hmm. because I had had my COVID vaccine, my second one, and it had like hit me like a train or a... Yeah, a train is a good example. A, a you definitely moaned semi- and groaned like you'd been cut in <laughs> half. I, it, was, it was crazy. I was like sweating and chilly and like felt nauseous like i i checked i checked all of the boxes except for actually fully vomiting so good on me (laughs) this is uh i'm proud of you (laughs) when you do something well so Uh. yeah so i'm tired and i watched this episode like first thing in the morning friday and now it's first thing in the morning saturday (laughs) so a lot of prescient thoughts i had have percolated down through the strainer and you're like maybe they're less important yeah well, okay, so this was Bounty Lost, episode nine of the Bad Yet Batch. Dumb title. I don't understand. Like, it's I guess it's fine. The bounty was the bounty for Cad Bane was lost. It just feels like they really did come up with these titles beforehand, wrote the episodes, and the episodes kind of tweaked a little bit throughout the development, and then it doesn't really a- apply as much as maybe other titles might have. If you had your druthers, what would you name this episode? Episode 1.9. Yeah. That is literally what I would have named it, which is what they typically do before they put the title in, right? Like yeah. Disney Plus releases it at like 1 o'clock in the morning our time. Usually it's episode 1.9, and then a couple minutes later, it flips to the title. This is what's been happening for all of the MCU move- shows. It happened yeah. with MODOK. Um and then the title comes in in a little bit. It's just that when they auto re- auto loads, it doesn't have the title in there. But no, what would you name this? Episode one point nine. No, no, it needs a name. They they Ugh. they require names. So what would Stupid you name it? Stupid unnecessary episode. Okay, <laughs> so I'm guessing o- overall general impressions. You didn't like this episode. I think I like this episode the least of all of them because the stakes wow. are so low. The, the stakes are like the low. Toto gets a leg back. like <laughs> And how, Toto how, too. <laughs> how Fennec Shand got her groove back. like I do have a question about how old Fennec Shand is. Um, because Fennec and Boba look to be the same age in Book of Boba Fett. Like similar age maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know? And she looks like a full ass grown adult. And so she's probably 20 years older than... Boba is. So I don't know how old Ming Na Wen is, but I'm guessing she's like closing in on fifty. Yeah. And I mean, it's it, been uh, so probably since the start of the Clone Wars, which is when we know Boba himself is ten, mm-hmm. right? To the Book of Boba Fett, it's at least thirty years. Mm-hmm. So I guess Boba is forty-ish, forty, forty, forty-five. He's younger than you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no. What? Forty-five. I'm well, younger than forty-five. I. I mean, barely. Uh, you're you're reaching up there. You're almost there. Wow. <laughs> you're like, you know. Oh, I get it. You're pushing my age out because you're <laughs> worried about your own. Age I'm getting there too. And you have that big digit coming next year. Uh, yeah, but they're saying that they're they're basically saying that she is significantly older than Boba. That's what they're saying. Because he looks like a child by the end of the Clone Wars. Well, he's a he's the exact same age as Omega. I know. I know. So, so that's what they're saying. <laughs> so she could just be like a very developed, like, 20-year-old. She could be a 20-something-year-old, yeah. right? And yeah, 30 yeah. years later, she's like 50-ish or whatnot. That, that, that tracks to me. Yeah. Also, have, having lived in Japan for an entire year. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not really good at detecting age signifiers in asian people especially japanese people right yeah 
because I could not tell once one of my students reached 20 years old, they looked pretty much exactly the same age until they were 60 years old. And then all the age signifiers that I'm used to seeing in Caucasian people in Canada, right? I, the wrinkling around the eyes, yeah. laugh lines, those things suddenly appear. I, I noticed them in women who are over 60. So once a, a woman in Japan was between the age of 20 and 59, I had no idea how old she was. <laughs> you're like, so you're... And they're like, oh, I'm 45. And you're and like, like, oh my God. You look like you're 22. And yeah, so... And that's okay. just on me, right? Because I can't <laughs> see the age signifiers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I, you know, I, and after a full year of teaching there, I still couldn't tell. Like, I, I just couldn't tell. It just wasn't possible. And so I have no problems with the people who created Fennec Shand being like, who knows how old she is? <laughs> because they too do not know her age signifiers. So we start out this episode. I mean, like, let's just get this out of the way. Sure. There is no death count. What did you think about this episode? Oh, me, myself? Yeah, before we get into death counts and oh, other things. I thought it was uh, low stakes and mm. unimportant. And I is, that hate... the, is that the title? <laughs> Low stakes and <laughs> important. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, okay, it was interesting, mm -hmm. right? Like there was some really cool things presented, like the Kaminoans had other facilities right? in places that uh, kind of look like Bespin. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't have time to look up if we knew where that system was and if the system was related to anything that we had ever known or anything like that, right? I've never heard that system's name before. So so maybe maybe we had and I'm just like not nerdy enough to yeah. have known it off the top of my head. Um, this is why I don't compete in any sort of trivia competitions to do with Star Wars because I know Star Wars but I don't know Star Wars that much and nor do I care to uh, no no shots on anyone who does um, it's just my preference is to think about symbolism and themes okay but so that was cool the cool inter Kaminoan politics slash emotionality I think that we're getting from the doctor versus the prime minister, the prime minister. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tanwi is dead. Oh, wait, Tanwi is dead. Right? That shocked me, I think, the most. Did we even know Tanwi? Ta I, I don't Tanwi, think we... Tanwi is in, is in, is one of the people that kind of helped raise Boba because she's mm. actually in Attack of the Clones. Oh, so Tanwi is like Boba's caretaker. Yeah. And Nala Se is Omega's character. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Tan Wee was the one who um, <clears throat> like introduced Obi-Wan Kenobi to Jango Fett. Wow. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering now if we're going to have Omega meet Boba Fett. I, it feels like it's moving to that right that position they, yeah. they wouldn't have brought it up the way they did they've introduced cad bane who had who has had such an integral role in the development of boba fett especially in the you know canon never happened episodes <laughs> like they've said that this is canon stuff that they just never did we uh we actually had a had a question and i think that this like playing into the soft understanding of genetics that everybody is very confused <laughs> And it's not just like our understanding, but sure. it's also like like uh, the the creators themselves understanding. And yes, it is magical, magical, far, far away magic slash. Okay, science. I don't need to sign an end user license agreement <laughs> in order to get to this question. Okay, so Kathleen actually logged onto the website and logged a full like form. So this is how much this bothered uh, them. I I assume. Um, how can Omega be an exact replica of Django Fett? She only has X chromosomes. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> That's not how genetics work. Yes, that is. It is not how it genetics is. work. I will fight with you all day long on this. <laughs> um, My X chromosome goes into the creation of Robin and one of your two X chromosomes so yes, went into the creation of Robin. So yes, she has a duplicate X chromosome exactly. from Joba. They took two Boba Fett. It's like budding. Django Fett. They Jang took two, two Django Fett X chromosomes and replaced the Y and just made the X. Exactly. That is what they did. Yes. So if they were to take her genetic material, uh, Omega's genetic material, and uh, 
create more clones out of it, mm-hmm. they would all be women because they have no X. Yeah, they have no they have no Y anymore. No, or they have no Y. Yes. Yeah. The yeah, y, yeah. The Y is. I mean, Y is really just a degraded X anyway. I know. So. Uh, so they made they... her more. They made her like the the. They made the X like more solid because it's more stable as a chromosome. It is. Anyways, yeah. Like this is just genetic speaking. Mm-hmm. I just like that's the only way they can make it work. They have not done that in modern science in humanity, like in Earth. They haven't done that effort. Oh, I haven't done the research on that. I'm positive that it's possible. Like from my, I'm I'm sure, but they haven't. There hasn't been like a paper published where they've taken a male genetic material and. Oh, did you look into this? I, I feel like I would have read it (laughs) again. I was passed out for thirty hours, so no, I've done zero research on this. This has been an ongoing discussion point for the two of us. We've hinted at it here on the podcast, but we have not actually fully delved into the argument that this has been. <laughs> Since the first episode when Omega is introduced. Okay, so cloning is not like duplication, right? So <laughs> No, it's true. And we assume that these cloners Well, I mean it is duplication. Well, I mean it's not just photocopying, that's all I'm saying, is that they they actually like create the embryo and grow the embryo. We've seen that, right? So one assumes they can genetically edit the you're going to have to because you have if you to. if you just matched them you don't know how those chromosomal pairs will interact with each other to to get those exact same permutations. Yeah. Right? So um, cuz Dolly is not Dolly the sheep, which was mm-hmm. the first sheep that was cloned. Cloned is not actually a genetic duplication of the original one. So it, the the cloners have technology we don't have necessarily and we just have to go along with it. Yeah, this is a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. They there have spaceships. Is science here they involved. They have hyperdrive. Like we, we are perfectly <laughs> accepting of the fact that they advanced, aged, and trained all of the clones in Utero, right in the cloning yeah. facility. That they have um, the technology from back to tanks and whatnot to rapid grow these clones. We can assume that they can take two of Django Fett X's from two different sperm, spermatozoas, and combine them together in such a way as to create a functional individual. But you're right in pointing out, and it should be recognized, that if they've lost the Y as a result, that all clones going forward would have to therefore be female in sex. There's a lot of thought experiments on whether you can clone a woman from a male, like a female female outcomed sex genetic this is just such a sticky there's a there's a whole like yeah there's a lot of thought experiment on it but i don't think that they've successfully done it yet that's all well not in humans because that's immoral (laughs) no but like mice or sheep i think they might have better chances with reptiles is my understanding like um especially amphibians newts and salamanders but it's neither here nor there I shrug. It's a space fantasy. Yay. <laughs> You're like, I don't like it. I disagree with it. No. But you know what? I'm just going to put it aside because it's part of the Star Warsian mythos I, that I like. I don't even dislike it. I just don't like it when uh, Okay, I don't I don't dislike it. I don't I don't care actually mm. it, as long as it's serving a story purpose. Mm-hmm. And actually, if she is related to Jango Fett, more fully mm-hmm. i actually like that better than she's actually a palpatine on so many levels and if that's the answer then thank goodness right right i don't want her to be a palpatine i don't no. want her to be related to to Sheev. i just don't need that anymore thank you <laughs> oh i don't know who came up with that but that person is speaking through some weird element because there's no evidence whatsoever in this it's just show fear that's what they're that speaking the through case. fear that that's what's going to happen that right that that she is the is let's the be fair this is an entirely all. different story group than than the one that got to handle the, the lack of one that got to handle the the final saga yeah, it was almost like a black hole of story thought two you're guy, right two guys alone in a hotel room <laughs> yes um anyways I, no th- i actually have no problem with it yeah either way right 
it's just more I don't like it when people are confused about the science Mm -hmm. and it gets in the way of the story. And that's unfortunately what they've done unintentionally, I think. Yep. But it is in service to the greater story. Because they do reference Boba, and we're going to see him. He's going to, yeah. he has yeah, yeah, to come yeah, into this yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. he's part of the Bad Patch. Because they reference him by his his non his, his non his given name signifier, exactly. i.e., Alpha. Exactly, you were the first one yeah. clone. <clears throat> and um, I don't know if it was mentioned in there, or so I was reading it about it afterwards. But Alpha and Omega are the same age, yeah. So they were, and they were both raised slowly over yep. time yep. was this tech that's talked about this yep so um or I, maybe i read it in a screen rant article too but they were both raised at the exact same time with no advanced aging Ooh, screen no rant. changes <laughs> well you know yeah. I, don't, I didn't like it but at least it gave me some all you know alternative thought processes to what this was yeah and i try to read a bunch of different articles yeah. after watching the episode to see what did other people say how does that change my own thoughts on it and the, it was a good point if there's no genetic modification that they've done to the other clones the ones that are out there the clone troopers then their their genetic code is more pure and therefore won't have degraded as far they can't do things with the clone troopers genetics because it's had all this tampering done to it Right. They could produce new things out of Omega or a different direction. Exactly. Yeah. Lady clones. Lady clones. Yeah. Unless they get Boba back. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, the only thing I really was in- enjoying in this episode was that political gamut between oh. the prime minister and Nala Say. That was really good. Yeah. And how Tuanwe was sacrificed as part of that. That was so neat. I mean, just dis- disappointing. Um, resolved things of, that we had questions about. Who hired Fennec Shand? Mm-hmm. Who hired Cad Bane? Yeah. Those were great pieces to that because we didn't know those questions. We're like, is it the same people? That seems, is it the Empire that's hired one and not the other? But it's actually the Kaminoans kept- arguing with themselves. Yeah. And I kept picturing Nala says, like, actually, Fennec Shand, I. I cannot have you go any further with this. Um, I've overdrawn on my personal bank account. Because <laughs> I think that, like, Nalise would have had to have paid for all of this out of, yeah. pocket, of, out of her own pocket. Like, yeah. the prime minister is using, you know, governmental funds to re- 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 you know, um, uh, recollect or collect on a, uh, a, like, you know, a lost asset. Yeah. Whereas Nalise is like, uh, yeah, I don't want you to have that asset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It definitely felt like Nalise had personal reasons for wanting, um, like how the how the episode plays out. It definitely feels like Nalise had a personal, you know, I want Omega to be safe, right? I want Omega to be free, and so we're okay with, um, yep. you know, whatever ended up happening. I would have liked more of that in a more slow burn um, development through this episode. I didn't need to see the fight between the prime minister and Nala say played out by their bounty hunters. Yeah. That felt like low. Cause we know Fennec Shand is still around at the end of this. We know that yeah. Cad Bane is going to get through this specific. So it just means there's going to be more Cad Bane story. It, to me, what ends up coming from the outcome of this is that Fennec because of money and Nala say because of reasons mm-hmm. are shadow helpers of the bad batch. Mm-hmm. And that that to me is kind of interesting, like how they've played it out like almost like a chess game on this old cloning facility. Um, It would be very freaky to be like, I'm a clone and I see clones in their clone pods Mm -hmm. and then be like, I'm not cool with this. And it also looked like all of the Kaminoans are kind of clones, potentially, because that was a Kaminoan that was in the thing. That also is a really interesting like... Oh my god, are they ever going to explore that? <laughs> I have no idea. But the, who who better to, you know, they are considered, you know, cloning masters in the galaxy and what template would they have had? Yeah. to to work on other than other, themselves. Other than themselves, yeah. So they they are able to create genetically different things out of their own cloned situations. Cells. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. All right, let's just quickly do uh death count because it happens right at the top of the episode (laughs) after oh wait first toto and omega omega let's talk about that first and then we'll go into death count 
I also want to talk about Toto and Cad Bane. Oh, yeah. Because you can tell just Toto. how how terrible a person Cad Bane is by how he treats his droid. Yeah. I've <clears throat> I've long said that how people treat droids in the Star Wars galaxy represents who they actually are. Yep. Deep down inside. He's a callous, <laughs> uncaring individual. Yeah. He's a jerk. <laughs> I yep. don't like him. I'm sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Look, um, yeah, o- Omega cares. Yeah. About sentient life. Including and droids. She fixes. She doesn't have to fix Toto's him. leg. Yeah, she could have just like. She could have just turned yeah. him off. Um, I loved how quickly trusting of her he became. Yeah. Like, I, I'm never going to let you out, but I could fix your leg. Oh, hmm. okay. I trust you implicitly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and she, and, and because of like how it shows through the episode, he has his leg fixed so well. He's like, it's like it's new. He says that when it first gets fixed and he's w- woken back yeah. up. And then he says it five minutes later. Yeah. Because he's like trying it out more. Yeah. I think he's made a friend for life. Like, I she's made a friend for life. I would put a caveat on that little asterisk to say she did betray him immediately after. <laughs> yes, that's true. And he does work for Cad Bane. I know. And he's not a good droid. He is he's bad guy. He's a bad droid, yeah. He's like, I've got the money. <laughs> he's just such a he's so incompetent. And he drops all the money. <laughs> he drops all the money. Shout out to Seth Green for doing a voice in Star Wars. Yeah, it's really digitized. It's yeah. hard to tell. Um, but he does so much voice work these days anyway. I know, with all the robot chicken and stuff. Modoc. And then Modoc, which was a solid win for for that group yeah. of people. You, you haven't realized it, but uh, they really they dropped those three episodes in one day. And then every week on the same time as they drop that latest Loki episode, they drop another Mo- Modoc. There's now five Modoc episodes out there. Which you, you definitely give a shout out to, right? Yeah. Yeah, I I highly recommend if you like ro- Robot Chicken, and you like the cor- sort of Marvel universe, you are if this is a the the Venn diagram that little that little snippet it's a, there. It's you, a full circle. If you like those two <laughs> things, you'll be you'll be right there. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's nice to have him back because like he was a nice add to the because he had been doing Robot Chicken when Clone Wars came out, yep. and so it's nice to have him back again. And since he's now in the st- in the uh, Disney family with Modoc, it's like okay, you're just going to the same place to record your voice. Yep. Cool. <laughs> uh, I do like their relationship. I think that there's a lot of uh, cool positive stuff that we could get in future storytelling because I don't think that Cad Bane is going to like give up necessarily. I think he's going to be chasing them for a while. Ugh, who cares? I I. <laughs> It's not interesting. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that the interesting parts, the themes that I'm interested in exploring and seeing play out on screen are the relationships of the Bad Batch themselves. Yeah. The Bad Batch and Omega. Yeah. And the Bad Batch and their environment. Yeah. And there was so much more being said and so much more you can take away from the show from that. And the Bad Batch get relegated to... Being a ship, be, you know, being in a ship, explication. So basically, yeah. they, they explain exposition. Thing, they, yeah. they just you know reveal things and then save the day at the the, the last possible moment. Which I thought, okay, finally this episode's getting interesting. They're gonna cliffhanger this, yeah, because she's falling, falling. in a ball. Yeah, <laughs> right. The ball is broken down, and she still has the ability to, to reach out and connect with them. Okay, the next episode is she's falling through the atmosphere. Can they save her? But they rescue her. So even that, and they rescue her like in a snap. Yeah. It wasn't like it, she it, was in any any sense of mortal yeah. danger. I think that this episode in general felt uh, very like, oh, how to, how to describe it? Okay, so like you have some action figures and you're like, I need to get from point A to point B. I need some of this plot stuff and some of this exposition, as you said, played out. And they literally just action figured it out. Yeah. Like my my bedroom is home base. The kitchen <laughs> is where the big battle's gonna happen. And this episode was just traveling down the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't I come on, put some action in the hallway. <laughs> and the action that you gave us is between un like 
irrelevant, almost, I hate to say irrelevant characters. I mean, Fennec Shand and Cad Bane are amazing. Yeah. But this show is not about them. Yeah. No, so it it plugged into the same problem I had with The Mandalorian season two with some of the episodes where it was like laying the groundwork for other shows. Mm -hmm. Because obviously this is laying the groundwork for Fennec Shand in the book of Boba Fett and also um, whatever the heck they're going to use Cad Bane for because bringing him back with this in mind. This feels weak from a from a character development perspective just to be like, hey, this is Cad Bane showing up and we're just using him as a plot device. That felt weak. It felt like maybe they want to tell more stories with Cad Bane in the future. It felt exactly the the same problem I had with season two yeah. of The Mandalorian, which was this isn't the show isn't about them. It's about the Bad Batch. Right. And although we got a lot of Omega, we didn't get a and and. I think a lot of people also sense that because not a lot of people are talking about this episode Mm -hmm. online and you can kind of sense that you're like, hey, they took the focus off of what was this show is about. Well, also, Omega doesn't develop in this episode. No, she 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 harnesses a relationship with the droid, but we already knew she had those. Yeah, we already knew that she was a caring, compassionate individual who was spunky and capable in the moment if she needed to save herself or save the day she could she could get out of her own problem we, we've already explored those pieces yeah they introduced cad bane what an amazing introduction he shoots hunter in the chest and hunter almost dies yeah wow cool they introduced fennec shand fennec shand is like stay with me i will protect you omega yeah. and then defeats the bad batch with like a quick head punch and a, a kick and yeah. wreckers knocked out like boom he's unconscious yeah and so we had those. Those were good episodes. I liked them a lot because they were Bad Batch centric. Mm-hmm. And this was not Bad Batch centric at all. So it felt unnecessary. Yeah. Right. Like I understand that there's greater plot lines happening in the, that are that will happen in the kitchen and we're in the hallway. We just got to get to the kitchen. But it's like you you needed to do more in the hallway. Hang a picture. Have a fight with your brother. Come yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it would have been more interesting if the Bad Batch had like they had a little bit of that fight on the platform and then the Bad Batch had shown up to add yeah. a third like relationship to the yeah. battle. Right. That would have made it more interesting or but they had it all play out without them there. And so there isn't the only thing that we kind of get as an outcome is Omega's. Omega da- doubling down on not wanting to go back to the Kaminoans at all. At all. Yeah. Which I guess, I don't Which know. Which is like, I, I don't know that we need All you're it. doing is foreshadowing that she's going to end up back there. Yeah. Because no, if you're she right. doesn't yeah. want, you, like, if as a dungeon master, I find out what you don't want to do or don't where you don't want to be, and then I'll push you towards that oh, point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, but, yeah. the story needs to this, take her this there. This is why I like, I like asking for backstories so I could use them against people. She's <laughs> unresolved, unresolved, uh, you know, issues. All right, let's go resolve them. I mean, yeah, but the, and we also know that um, Lama Su is going to protect her and, or no, Lama Su is going to go after her still mm-hmm. and the prime minister and the doctor is going to um, protect her and yeah, okay. It's written in the stars, in the Star Wars. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, this this was written by, I'm going to batch the bitch. I'm going to bastardize the name, so I apologize. But Matt Michnovets, Michnovets, Mick Michnovets, Michnovets, who is also seems to be the overarching story editor. Like he's the advisor, or the the person who's been kind of script watch. He's script watch Bad Batch, because um, he's tight. His name is added below the each writer of every episode to date. So he's kind of head and i wouldn't i don't want to call him head of story because it's jennifer corbett um what would you call him he's the story editor listed on the credits story editor okay yeah so he probably is the one that's like making sure that all of the disparate writers are all plugging into the same things and making sure that there isn't any inconsistencies and just making sure it's like solidly the same voice and stuff like that exactly but it does feel deus ex machina Mm-hmm. Because it is literally God saying this is what needs to happen. Yeah. Well, this this episode was 20 scenes long. It's a standard stock 20, yeah. 
one and a half minute episode, 22 minute episode. Yeah. So nothing long there. Uh, 20 scenes is pretty good. So and there was just the one big fight scene, which was a nice long piece that had only a couple of interposed moments with the Bad Batch themselves or Omega running away. Um, and so that was really good and had that nice standoff between them. So like if you were doing a Fennec Shand, Cad Bane, you know, war that is to come, this was a great scene. There's some yeah. like he's using his flamethrowers he gets knocked we, off the wind we wall. got to see his boots activate his, which has been a while it, since we've seen his boots activate he star lords out of there um <laughs> It was it was really well done and very interesting and entertaining to watch. And I really liked watching Fennec Shand fight Cad Bane, knock his helmet off. And you see, like, he he wears that hat for a reason. There's something yeah. wrong with the top of his head. Like, he's got a plate or something there. Yeah. And he's very embarrassed by this. He, do, he That's why he's always wearing the hat. Um, so when Fennec Shand knocks his hat off, he he's like, oh, now it's for reals. Yeah, and he, he kind of mocked her like, you're not experienced enough. And she's like, I'll show you, which I loved too. And it makes me like go like, hey, I love these kick-ass characters in Fennec. I love even more. Yeah. Yay. No, it was a great it was a great way to show how awesome she was and that we're going to be excited to see her in the Book of Boba Fett. But again, mm -hmm. that's not the purpose of this story. Exactly. And it's a mistake that that Star Wars keeps on doing, which yeah, is... It's, it's the wrong side of world building. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's when right? the DM takes over the whole game. Or he... In <laughs> or or even worse is in like those TTRPG streams where they have like five players and then they bring on a guest NPC <laughs> and then the storyteller and the guest NPC spend the whole game talking to each other and forcing the other five players to be spectators in their own game. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And it, to me, worst. it's a storytelling mistake. Yeah. Give our give our protagonists things to interact with. Yes. Not things to spectate. Yes. And that's and that, what happened. Yeah. Because Omega is not an active, although she she did things that, that wasn't enough mm -hmm. for her mm -hmm. to, to have grown or for to have faced challenges other than running away, which we already know she's very good at. Yeah. Running away and being saved. <sighs> Yeah. Okay. And then um, the one other point I wanted to make on that. <laughs> yeah. Was that I'm, we went so long without Crosshair that I actually like seeing him on screen now. And I, I hate him so much. <laughs> I've hated him all along. Yes. <clears throat> I'd like to go back to our initial Clone Wars stuff and see whether or not I said like, this is a bad guy. <laughs> like, I feel like I said that. In, in our season I, seven I think Clone he did. Wars. Yeah. And he is genuinely a bad... The look on his face of suffused rage when they get away. I know. The one shot we get of him, he's like, take them down. And I'm like, dude, why are you even flying co-pilot? You're like super beat up from that ion it's engine. It's just rage that is fueling him. It's yeah. very... And a lot of people have pointed out how... Um, visually and thematically, he reminds people of Vader Absolutely. being so broken up and so ex like burned and <laughs> exposed. And yeah, he's pulling the full dark side card. Okay, let's talk about Boba because I think that that's going to be, like I said, mm -hmm. I really want to see him in the show now because of the groundwork that they laid. And it was all done via exposition being like taxane. I've analyzed her genetics. I now know how old she is. I now yeah. know all of this mysterious stuff. And we already had the cloning what is possible, what is not possible. And I think that everybody probably listening to this is more confused now. But it's going to open with Boba next episode. You think so? Has to. You don't kill Boba's principal caretaker, reference him as Alpha. Yeah. And bring him up. What? Four different scenes mentions Boba Fett <laughs> in this in this that yeah. you don't have a Boba related moment. Like to me, if I was the if I was the prime minister, I would want to capture Boba, mm -hmm. right? And Omega, because mm -hmm. then you'd have both of them. Yep. And how I would do that would be by hiring Boba to capture Omega. Mm -hmm. And then that would create internal conflict with the Bad Batch and like the 
like Omega must know Boba. I would think. <laughs> you would think, right? They were raised 10 years as children who were kind of kept separate. Yeah. In in the cloning, I mean, a large city, sure. But yeah. Yep. That's interesting. They can lay like history of the universe that we aren't aware of because it's personal. Yep. Boba Fett, the, the gift to Jango Fett. Yeah. Omega, their gift to themselves. Yep. Yeah, this is going in this route. If if Omega is genuinely a part of the Bad Batch because she's special and different, yeah, and therefore part of Clone Force 99 as a result of that, then Boba is just as much part of that family. I mean, he's... I mean, he's that shithead cousin who's in jail, <laughs> but... <laughs> okay. Crosshair's that weird. terribly conservative, weird uncle that uh always posts stuff on facebook posts a bunch of stuff from, on from, facebook <laughs> from conservative right-wing media outlets and you're wondering is that are you a good person <laughs> <laughs> oh god he didn't just go a little fascist he went full fascist i mean this isn't my question for the people out there listening but we all have that uncle, right? Like, I'm not alone in thinking that everyone has that uncle. Oh, I certainly do. I I have a couple of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. I'm, yep. I just, you know, not my question to the audience. If you don't have that uncle, though, like, you should just be f- so happy. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to be like, you're still on Facebook? And if, yeah, if it's not an uncle... And it's closer than an uncle. You know, I feel for you. You you need more. You need better found family to combat <laughs> your genetic family. Which you know, like Star Wars is doing a great job of being like it's not about found family at all. It's about genetically identical family. <laughs> <laughs> We're literally all the same. <laughs> so much. Everything's the same in Star Wars of late. It's so weird. Yeah. I worry about that. <laughs> it's because, you know, maybe they haven't had enough people of different backgrounds pitching story ideas because, of course, this was created by Dave, Dave Filoni. And no no shots against Dave. He's a brilliant creator. But it means that we're going to get kind of the same flavor of story. You know, it's like in The Good Place how everybody's like, hey, frozen yogurt you love frozen yogurt but then it, when you eat frozen yogurt for all of eternity you realize you don't love frozen yogurt maybe it's like that i don't know where i'm going with this it doesn't matter how many flavors of frozen yogurt there are it's still frozen yogurt yes that's what i'm saying yes yeah it doesn't matter if it's mandalorian flavored frozen yogurt or bad batch flavored frozen yogurt it's it's still frozen yogurt yes and it it plugs into the same themes and it's like we're almost having the reverse conversation of last week, which was like, I'm really excited about this show and where it's going. And now I'm like, why did you do this show this way, this episode? Yeah. <laughs> it just, it, it feels a little disappointing to have taken the lens away from the Bad Batch. Also, they have to be careful. It's very risky dropping an episode a week, having a flat episode, a hallway episode. If you have a flat episode, you're going to lose that interest to come back to it right away the following week. You need stronger, more satisfying story arcs and bigger cliffhangers in order to make sure that you're keeping people around and interested in the conversation to the following week. Yeah. If this was a Netflix, we dropped all of them in your people lap. People would be willing to go to the next episode, yeah. maybe. Just roll into the next yeah. episode 20 like, ah, that later. one wasn't so good, but it's all available so I can see where this goes. Yes. Yeah. And they might go on longer. But uh, but again, the week by week model keeps the conversation going. But if nobody is talking about your episode yep. online yep. because it was not actually that engaging or that driven, yep. it's going to lose people. And I mean, it's competing directly against Loki. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Loki is fascinating. L- Loki ends on this massive cliffhanger. Yeah. On Wednesday night. and. You wonder what how the they can't get off the planet. Why didn't you end this episode of Bad Batch with her still falling? I get that it's a a sitcom, like it, it's it's a half hour format. It's not meant as a drama. Like everything mm, wraps up. It's definitely at the a end, sitcom, right? We're yeah. all back on the ship and we're off to the next adventure. But if 
you're telling me this is a season that there's an overarching story there's no need to wrap everything up in a neat little package in a tidy little bow since things things do move forward there is progression in the story we're watching that happen there you know and as much as i was like it's not happening enough it is happening it's just you're not you're not using that element to keep people invested in what's going to start the next week so I wonder if when they were creating it, they didn't know if they would be on Disney Plus or not, or if they would mm-hmm. be having this show on like family or one of the other direct because they, they've kept to the size of episode yep. two. Yep. So I actually think that they might not have known well, this where, initial, the, where the distribution would have been or the season when it was mapped out in this way. But yeah, you've got a story editor who's sitting there planning it out. It would not have been hard to. Um, to make that, to make those subtle changes yeah. in the script. I mean, animation is hard to, to go back on because the pipeline is so hard to, to to reverse and try to fill in more to say more or to do more. So once they have it kind of locked, right. they were trying to fit with that. I get that. But it's yeah. not hard to just end the episode with her falling. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like that was all we took. That's all that that took. I probably would have been so much more invested in what happens this episode if she had been still falling at the end of this episode. And then they made the rescue itself. The rescue could just part. be the very start of the next episode. Yeah. It didn't even, it did. I would have liked to have seen that as a full episode of its own. Yeah. Um, because I feel I think that there is some really good tension that comes from that. Yeah. Um also, Omegas are like big unknown. Omega and the Bad Batch themselves are our big unknown. We don't know if they survive through the season. We don't know if we're still going to have Echo or Tech or Wrecker or Hunter. It's true. We don't know if they or survive. Or hair. We yeah. don't know if any of them live. Yeah. We don't know if Omega lives. We know nothing about this little part of this galaxy. Yeah. And putting them in risk, having them potentially be hurt and lost is valuable to to the story makers to twick you know to tweeze and to ping the emotional investment of their viewers it's not like um having luke skywalker show up at the end of the mandalorian well luke nothing can happen to him he's got to go on and do the next Plot set of stuff armor. He, yeah exactly yeah he's shrouded and that's why when fennec shan shows up i'm like oh nothing's gonna happen to fennec she's perfectly fine going into the season one of mando yeah perfectly fine so she doesn't even have her cool insides. Exactly she gets like right. from Boba. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I'm still in for Bad Batch. Yeah. But I didn't need this this episode. <sighs> and so I'm ready with Bad Batch, Sad Batch. You're ready with Bad Batch, Sad Batch? Yeah. Okay. Are you? Yes. <laughs> I think it's mine was not very good. So. I, I'm really happy with mine. Okay. Yours first. Yeah. yeah. So this episode. This episode is an episode of Cad Batch. <laughs> okay, that was the obvious one, and I didn't, I didn't catch that. It's literally, the very next letter in the alphabet. Dang it! Okay, I did add Batch. Oh, nice. Uh, because we have added to the Bad Batch with saying that Boba is Alpha. Yeah, that's very true. You, yeah, you, we've added to the group. Yours is so much more thoughtful than I mean, my extremely obvious cad batch oh well i i i like obvious apparently literally just went backwards in the alphabet (laughs) yeah well you know no it like it yeah it it's a d d right add Mm -hmm. like i've added to the bad batch yeah yeah um so okay we're kind of at a net zero (laughs) yeah i know right in this episode i was like this is gonna heighten the tension and it didn't oh not at all I don't know. I, I'm like, we're kind of back at where we were. They're still in debt to Sid. Um, we now have revealed the tension of the Kaminoans. And all they can do is either add more tension to the Bad Batch by inserting Boba, like we've talked about, or having more Empire chasing the Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. I don't know where they go from here. Because um, like nobody else cares about them as much as... The Kaminoans right. and the Empire. I think Crosshair is going to go back. We're going to get some Crosshair and Rampart stuff. Yeah, Rampart's going to ramp up the antagonism. <laughs> yep. 
The Kaminoans are going to get even more worried, but because they're infighting, they've l- largely made themselves ineffective. Yeah. Um, and and now Lassay is even pushed further away by the prime minister. It would be cool if she like left the Kaminoans and did her own thing. I would like, the, like, yeah, there's cool stuff that could happen out of this. And we're gonna get a plot wise a push towards Boba. Yeah. So I'm uh, I'm I'm very interested in seeing where things go next. Uh, but they have to be careful with their empire development, right? Because that impinges like so much of their any development that they do there speaks to anything that happens later and they mm. want to be accurate and correct. And so it's going to take a lot more rigmarole and and discussion points in their story room and probably discussions with the holocron keeper and all the other people who are, you know, the authorities of what it is to be Star Wars because anything to do with the empire has been very thoroughly you know, discussed and created and articulated in yeah. other stories already. Yeah. But I think they have to go there in order for this story to be, so, to have an antagonist that's relevant to yeah. the story. I just don't see Boba being the end antagonist, so I don't think it's going to be him. No, it couldn't be. Yeah, it has to be the Empire. I still think that it's going to be, <clears throat> like, I think the best story that they could tell is freeing as many of the clones from the chips. Mm-hmm. And that's why... In the end, the empire, the decision is sort of made for the empire that they need to recruit yep. because the Bad Batch manages to free the clones from yep. control. And then the clones like, Whew, go to the wind. Yeah, I don't know where they go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm- I suspect a lot of them will die, unfortunately. And then some of them will be like uh, freed. Clone trooper, stormtrooper war. That would be cool. And it's like kept under wraps. Ooh, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just, to me, would be, like, so interesting to actually have that be the story rather than necessarily, like, like it's almost like Secret Wars. Like, yeah. we, this is a war we didn't realize happened. Well, my other know? concern is that we had Execute Order 66 where yeah. they kill all the Jedi and there's another order in there that, that just terminates the clones. Oh. And it, like the Palpatine's like them? execute order 86. <laughs> yeah. Which you it might just causes know. them to have an aneurysm. And then they have an aneurysm and die. Yeah. Um, 86 is a restaurant term because it means that something to is cancel no longer the order. On the, no, no, something is no longer on the menu. Oh, so if something has been 86. It means we don't have any more of it. Oh, Execute order 86. That would be a deep cut to somebody who worked in a restaurant. Yeah. And I would be like, slow clap, Kyle. Nice. Yeah, I I really hope that they don't 86 the clones. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And yeah. So anyone, they they have, they've got to like, they they know that this, this order exists. Yeah. And as they, you know, they build up their, the rampart to their stormtrooper program and they can move away from the clone trooper, that they realize that this is going to happen, that they're going to execute that order because they don't need the clones anymore. Save as many as possible. And so they try to save as many clones as they can. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Try to remove those chips. And that's why we had the scene where the chip was being removed yeah. so they, they know how to do it. Well, we knew that that was going to be important. It has to be important. It yeah. has to be important. Yeah. 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 And then it's a rush to save as many clones as they can. Oh, my baby clones. I want to save them all. I know. Yeah. Wouldn't you watch the show? I, yeah. I think that I hate speculation. Now, if they don't do this. I, I will end up being dis- <laughs> I will likely likely be disappointed because I'm setting that's why I hate speculation <laughs> and I don't like entering into it. I'm like, let's just keep my thoughts off on a this like, not even on the burner on the stove. Just you put just it off to, to the to, side, leave it you in have the pantry. To, like, be like, this is just one of many futures that could possibly happen. And if they come up with something super cool that is even cooler than this, yeah. I will be happy. You know. No. No, because well, it never <laughs> happens, right? I'm like, no, nothing what is if ever Omega cooler than your the, idea. <laughs> Omega having a, the ability to, like, you know, control put, the chips. You know, you know, yes, be, that would have been cooler than them just having to rem, having the weight of the knowledge to remove the chip. That still could happen. I don't think they're going that way. Who knows? You're like, I'm okay with it because it's still Star Wars. So I always, I always put on my yeah, like tinfoil tiara and like. If it's speculation and it doesn't happen, I'm okay with it because, yeah. you know, as long as the story and the characterization and it drives to a point that is really 
like interesting and explores really cool, interesting thematic things, they got there. That's cool. Yeah. Right. And if they don't, if that doesn't happen for me, I'm like, uh, why am I not writing more? <laughs> <laughs> Which is also something I say to my audience all the time. You've got great ideas. Be a creator. Create them. So oh, yeah, your audience, you. not to me. No, no, I'm saying that to you too. Oh, I don't have time. <laughs> I'm too busy speculating. <laughs> That's my problem. I'm too busy speculating. Gosh. <laughs> well, I went back. Read some YouTube comments, got some other notes and whatnot. Yeah. Any other comments that I'm kind of tired of people listening to that one episode and then telling me about a scomp link. (laughs) (laughs) I'm still getting that. (laughs) I'm probably years from now. People are going back to watch the Bad Batch episode. It's a scomp link. Scomp link is. I'm like, that's not what he said. Scomp in, and I mistook it anyway. So. I thought it was scomping, which was one word in itself. Scomping. I'm like, what's (laughs) scomping? (laughs) <laughs> nothing what's going on they're just with trying you? to be helpful you asked. i i know i did i know <laughs> so um cad bane has had a lot of really really cool ships <laughs> and i don't think i'd ever seen him in this ship in this episode the way it turned when he came into dock this was an entirely new ship <laughs> which means cad bane has had Three different ships at this point. That's awesome. I I liked Fennec's ship. Yeah. I just yeah. I'm I'm just looking forward to seeing Fennec on her own in her own show, focused on her. Mm-hmm. Weird introduction. We keep on. I didn't mind yeah. the other introduction. I didn't. Oh mind no no Fennec that one was fine. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I'm still not minding Fennec in this. I just didn't think that this episode's we we've discussed this yeah. at length. Um, so I want to know which of Cad Bane's ships is your favorite. Not just you, Marie Claire, because you probably are like I don't. I couldn't even tell you. But <laughs> if you're listening to this, do a quick Google search, and you'll be like, he has had quite a few ships. Yeah, I mean, unless it's. The silencer or Kylo's command shuttle. I'm not really a specific like ship person. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have liked more exploration in the Mandalorian of what it means to be a bounty hunter and part of the bounty hunter guild. Because being called a bounty hunter in Star Wars has a significant amount of weight. Yeah, it does. If you're yeah. a bounty hunter, people treat you with a certain degree of awe and reverence. Django Fett, Boba Fett, Cad Bane, Fennec Shand. Um, IG, even. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that they just have, like, and they have code. They have a code. They have, like, you know, probably other bounty hunters will go after you mm-hmm. if you break that code. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. And it's different than being a mercenary, although sometimes they will act as mercenaries. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And so um, I'm kind of... I'm, I, as much as Cad Bane is really cool, really interesting, um, the child napper can be, you know, we can we can be done with him at this point. I don't think we need more of the uh, the bounty hunter of children. Um, <laughs> You've gotten a reputation, Cad Bane, and it's not a good one. It's not. Like, ca- yeah. the kidnapper of, of uh, emperors and children. I mean, the emperor really is a big baby anyway. I mean, but that was all him setting it up on yeah. himself. So, well, Cad Bane didn't know that. No, I know, but so, ca- yeah. ca- but Cad Bane is kidnapper of big babies and little babies, including Zero the Hut. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> who is kind of like a big baby? The biggest of babies. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, that's all I got. Yeah. Next episode might be a little bit weird for us to record because we're trying to figure out when we're going to do it because we're going on like a 13 hour road trip yep on friday (laughs) so when we record it it might be a little bit weird or we might have to record it late or whatever um it'll still be out for monday still be out for monday for regular feed and patrons who are and you know we'll get it up to you as soon as we've recorded it exactly in raw format with all of our weirdness. Yes, right? That's what you've you've basically started that now is that you release the raw feed unto the people. <laughs> Sans delivery of vanity for the bathroom in the basement. <laughs> Cuz that was like 5 minutes of silence. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to my patrons. No, that's fair. 
well, yeah. why did it suddenly get silent for five minutes and they walked away? <laughs> <laughs> well, now they know, but that it won't be there. But nonetheless, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah. So if you are looking for your stuff specifically online, Kyle Me, Gould, Kyle. where can people find you? I don't have a ton of stuff online. Um, other than my voice on a bunch of projects. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, check out Tavern Tales comes out every Wednesday. Um, numbers dropped significantly this month, but I'm thinking it's because people are outdoors again and running around doing stuff. Um, summertime. Yeah. So if you're going for lots of walks in the park and, or you're bored, um, you're bored in a house and you're in a house bored, you know, turn on some Tavern Tales get taken away to sit quietly amongst a group of six people sitting in a basement studio playing Dungeons and Dragons. You will feel like you're in amongst really good friends having a great time. Trust me, they all laugh far too much than is good for them. Uh, And you (laughs) will laugh too as a result of this. Um, And uh, yeah, I can't wait to uh, talk to y'all next week. Thank you again for coming out to Bad Batch Report and we will uh, be back next week. Cheers. Thank you for listening to What the Force. I'm Marie Claire Gould, your host. Our music is orchestral music by Christy Carew for What the Force. We have a Patreon at patreon.com slash what the force. We like to thank all our patrons, especially those who love and are obsessed with What the Force. Brad, Cheryl Bell, Melody, Nate Huntress, and Wild Space, Felicia, Al Rude, Anna Perez, Mikhail Mom, Neil, James, Joellen D, Christian Luca, Josh Johnson, Scott C, Susan, and Adam Dyson. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube or leave a five-star review on iTunes or other pod apps. It helps people find the show. Check out our other channel on YouTube or other podcast feeds, What the Fiction. You can connect with us on Twitter at WT Force Show, What the Force Podcast on Facebook, or our website, whattheforce.ca, or on our Discord. Links are in the liner notes. Feel free to reach out and start a conversation. Cheers.